So we will start today's topic. Um, it's uh, about the stroke rehabilitation. So how actually can we implement the robotics into the comprehensive post-stroke therapy process? Why we want to uh, talk about the comprehensive uh, therapy? Because Luna EMG can be applied in every reorganization phase of the uh, stroke rehabilitation program so that we can really uh, influence uh, the progress of our patients from the very beginning uh, until the very, very advanced phase of the rehabilitation. Uh, when we talk about stroke, we have to think about the main progress, the main problems which we need to uh, face with. Uh, first of all, I will talk about the muscle weakness because we can observe um, Many times the muscle weakness, so which is strongly um, associated with, uh, with the stroke um, um, stroke uh, stage of, of the patient. And the muscle weakness can uh, be um, observed in uh, different body parts. It's always um, dependent on the stroke location and um, the patient uh, condition. Then very common partial or complete paralysis. It often um, it is often about the, the upper limb, but also about lower limb. Um, sometimes we can also observe uh, the lower um, muscle force and lower muscle activity also in the trunk, uh, which is strongly connected with the um, uh, upper and lower limb body function. Um, partial or complete lo loss of sensation. Here, we need to target also the proprioception problem of our patient. Uh, muscle tone disorders. So here we can talk about um, increased muscle tone or decreased muscle tone. So we face mostly the patients uh, either with the spasticity or with uh, the uh, placid, um, placid muscle, muscle activity. Balance disorders, they are also uh, a part of the uh, stroke side effect. So we can observe it um, um, in the group of patients who had a cerebellum stroke. It's, um, it's also uh, connected with the uh, trunk muscle weakness. Uh, and also it depends on the, um, on the stroke area. Um, stroke patient has also um, sometimes a decreased cognitive abilities. So we need to um, contact with them um, very precisely. Uh, and um, we need to target the task uh, very, uh, very directly, so it is understandable. Um, the biggest uh, role in the rehab neuro rehabilitation has the neuroplasticity. What is neuroplasticity? It is the brain ability uh, to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout the life. So uh, all the connections in the brain, which uh, has been damaged due to the stroke, um, in a way of 100,000 active repetition can be, um, uh, can be rebuilt with the success uh, because the adaptive capacity of the central nervous system um, is uh, on a high ability to modify and reorganize the function. But of course, it needs a lot of repetitions. Uh, the main aim of the neuroplasticity is to reorganize the brain, to restore, or if it's impossible to restore, to compensate for the function which has been lost or compromised due to a stroke. Why uh, those active repetitions are so, uh, so important? Uh, there are a lot of study which proves that active participation of the patient contributes uh, to significantly higher activation of the sensimotor uh, cortex during um, the movement. Um, and uh, it is uh, already known that 
active participation is um, much more effective than all the movements which are performed uh, passively. And here we can um, we can work with that uh, on Luna EMG, and this can be uh, can be achieved even with those patients who uh, cannot really um, uh, move their limb uh, voluntarily. How does Luna EMG work? Um, our main feature, the main feature of the robot is the reactive electromyography. So Luna EMG captures the signal from the patients um, and the, 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 uh, in the brain and captures the signal from the muscles uh, by the, um, uh, the, electro the EMG surface electrodes. And on this basis, it assists with a given move. Let me present you a short video uh, on uh, how does Luna EMG uh, work to give you a little bit more um, point of view. The brain uses its neuroplasticity mechanism to rewire itself and form new neural connections. The more repetitions you perform during physiotherapy, the more your brain rewires itself. As a result, mobility improves. This is where Luna EMG steps in. Luna EMG is a robotic device dedicated for neurological and orthopedic patients. It is being used as a tool to improve neuromuscular coordination, range of motion, and muscle strength. The most unique feature is the electromyography-driven robotic movement. The robot detects muscle activity and assists with the motion if patients get beyond the threshold line. Due to that, even patients with a slight muscle contraction can work actively and get better results quicker. Luna EMG is equipped with exchangeable extensions, which allows to perform the training of all major joints. We can work with our patients using games to engage the patient even more. All data and reports are stored in the system and can be presented to the patients themselves or to insurance companies. Luna EMG is used as a holistic device with passive active and active assistive training. Robotics can help patients perform exercises beyond their limits. The brain uses its neuro... So uh, what is the Luna EMG working mechanism? As it was introduced in the video, uh, the intention to move uh, is um, a design in, uh, in the brain. And uh, by... Um, by the electrodes, by the EMG uh, sensors, Luna can capture the uh, electrical activity of the muscle by the surface EMG. And based on that, the uh, robot responds to the user desire to move and provides the um, assistive movement in the real time EMG biofeedback. So the patient can actually observe the, the movement on the screen, which is uh, positively uh, affecting his uh, willing to, to undertake any uh, activity. And this visual feedback also enhances the brain plasticity and uh, allows uh, the um, myofeedback-based motor relearning. Main concepts uh, uh, which are strongly connected with Luna EMG is, of course, the neuroplasticity. So the, even weak patients can uh, perform more active repetitions with, uh, with Luna. Uh, and there, there are much more active repetitions than during the standard uh, training. And of course, those active repetitions has a big influence on um, the neuroplasticity, uh, neuroplasticity process. Another concept is motor learning. So patient actually is working on how to contract and relax voluntary different muscles in the different time. Um, uh, he can actively work on contractions and uh, compensations of um, of uh, several movements. 
Uh, we can also assess our patients with Luna EMG. So um, it is also an objective tool um, based on the assessment. We can adjust the therapy in the best possible way. And we can also um, track the progress of our patients from a day to another. Uh, the main indications uh, for stroke patient and for neurorehabilitation, um, we involve LUNA everywhere uh, when we, were, we want to improve muscle force, when we want to work with our patient on muscle coordination, on a range of motion increasement. Uh, LUNA EMG uh, can be uh, used for both upper limb um, and lower limb rehabilitation. So we have different extension here. You can see it is the um, elbow extension. We have also the wrist extension, very nice shoulder extension, which uh, can be used also for the frozen shoulder uh, in the stroke patients. So I will talk about it a little bit um, later on. We can also work with the EMG and on the trunk, which is really, really important in the stroke rehabilitation because building a stroke basis, a strong core, enables to better function of uh, upper and lower limb. Lower limb extension, so we can uh, actively work with the foot drop. So this is the ankle extension and foot drop extension. We can work with the trunk by using EMG biofeedback. We can also assistively work with the hip and with the knee. A Luna EMG is a holistic device. So as I to told you already at the beginning, we can apply Luna EMG in every reorganization phase. Uh, as Luna is a portable device, you can um, easily go to the patient's bed and start the rehabilitation as, as, as fast as possible. So even in the neuro ICU ward, Luna EMG can be successfully implemented for those patients who are um, in the very early rehabilitation phase and they are um, immobilized in bed. So we can provide bedside therapy. Then when the patient comes, uh, becomes um, um, a little bit stronger, so we can uh, still work uh, in the patient's uh, room uh, without taking him to the rehabilitation gym. And we can apply um, from passive to active, active assistive and even resistive training. Then we can of course move him um, and in time to the rehabilitation gym and then Luna EMG can also uh, work with patients on the outpatient phase. So um, when the patient is already discharged from the hospital and need to continue uh, the rehabilitation on the um, more outpatient uh, level. Uh, there are a few concepts uh, behind Luna EMG, and one of those is uh, EMG-driven robotic training, and there are some studies behind, uh, which uh, tells us about the robot-assisted rehabilitation uh, used on the um, stroke patient group. And it's already uh, said that stroke survivors can reach larger range of motion and um, a significant decrease in the EMG signal from agonist muscles. So um, they work uh, on the muscles which um, uh, we want them to, um, to, to activate in the certain movement. And they can be trained with the active assistive training. They can be trained in the previously unreached range of motion. So they can apply the voluntary residual uh, EMG and we can observe the activity even on the paretic side. Um, in this study, the study of Song and other authors, after 20 sessions of rehabilitation training, uh, we could observe the significant improvements uh, in the muscle strength, uh, strength and um, in the clinical scales uh, which were used for, uh, for the assessment. Another star study of uh, Basteris and other authors confirmed 
uh, that uh, active participation, so this active contribution um, in the exercise, uh, for example, by using EMG assistive programs may be really beneficial to the stroke patient because of uh, this uh, strong um, input of, um, on the neuroplasticity. Um, we have also made uh, our own study uh, on the stroke patient group and we have uh, divided um, the patients uh, into two groups, the intervention group, which was, um, they were training with, uh, the patients were training with Luna EMG um, and the standard physiotherapy. When the control groups uh, group was based on the standard uh, individual physiotherapy and uh, another device, so it was the lower limb plotter. A rotor and training period for that study was six weeks and the patients were exercising one hour and a half per day every day so five days a week and as a result you can observe the main main result um, that the patients uh, in the training group so those who trained with Luna they uh, resulted with a higher decrease of the spasticity, which was measured by the modified Ashworth scale. And also we could observe a slight, but still stable increase of the tight circumference. So we could, um, we could say that uh, the patients gain uh, a little bit of muscle, um, uh, muscle mass during those training. So it was really um, with a good result. Why uh, it is so important to apply the repetitions? Um, there are strong evidence on uh, the doses of practice and the large doses of practice are really required to produce uh, the, the lasting neural changes and to optimize the motor learning. And we can see that the standard PT, uh, we, with the standard PT, we can perform about 32 repetitions per hour, but we do not say about the passive repetition. These are the active repetitions, so with active contribution of the patient. Uh, when we use Luna EMG in comparison, we can perform uh, really about 60 active repetitions uh, within 10 minutes. So um, there is much more um, effective training uh, to be done by, Luna, by using uh, Luna EMG. Uh, unfortunately, current um, doses of, of uh, task-oriented exercises during um, undertaking uh, um, rehabilitation are not really adequate to, um, to, to the re neuro-rehabilitation, neural reorganization um, function uh, in the post-stroke uh, patient group. So, um, there are not enough repetitions made to rebu rebuild the new neuropaths in the brain. Uh, I would like uh, to emphasize uh, the relevance and the importance of the early rehabilitation because uh, sometimes we are afraid to apply Luna EMG to very severe uh, patients. We apply to uh, uh, we are um, afraid to apply any rehabilitation to severe patients which are on the ICU neurological wards, so with a lot of tubes and, um, and monitors, um, so they are really in the um, bad condition and very risky stage, uh, but they are still strong evidence behind uh, implementing uh, the re early rehabilitation and patients who initiated the rehabilitative procedures within first week after the stroke had better long-term outcomes uh, than those who did not uh, initiate the, the rehabilitation. Um, and it is extremely important for the upper extremity. 
because it is the most um, uh, beneficial when we started within two weeks of stroke. Uh, the best results in the stroke rehabilitation we can uh, observe within the first year after. But of course, the faster results we can observe during first months of, um, of uh, rehabilitation. And of course, um, with Luna EMG, uh, we can start very early mobilization of the patient, even when the patient is uh, immobilized in bed. So we can work actively also just with the EMG, or we can apply the passive movement uh, with the EMG sensors attached to observe whether the patient is actively contributing in the movement or not. Um, what more? Early and intensive rehabilitation of patients with acute and um, acute strokes in a neuro ICU is feasible. So we shouldn't be afraid of applying uh, the neuro rehabilitation even with the re robotics uh, on the very acute, um, acute patients. Um, we can of course apply uh, and start with um, a little uh, time of the exercise. So, um, uh, we can also uh, try to uh, work um, more often with Luna, like several times per day, but for um, a little time. So the patient is mobilized more frequently, uh, but it's not overloaded. He's not overloaded uh, with, the, um, with the effort. Um, this very early and intensive rehabilitation really results in improved functional outcomes and this, these outcomes may be measured uh, with uh, different uh, functional scales, so like the Barto scale, and also the patients are more likely to um, like walk independently also at hospital discharge. So, the faster we start the rehabilitation, the better results um, the patient will uh, gain. Early post-stroke rehabilitation is really safe, beneficial, especially in critically ill patients. Um, and this early and intensive mobilization uh, uh, improves uh, the functional outcomes. And this I would like you to really remember and um, that we shouldn't really be afraid to go with the rehabilitation for the acute patients. A um, few words about the CPM because also um, for those acute phase and for the very beginning of the rehabilitation, we will start with the passive movement. Um, passive movement, uh, provided by the robot, uh, increase the range of motion and also uh, we can decrease the spasticity um, by using the assistive mode, also among the patients uh, after stroke. Robot-assisted passive strain, uh, stretching uh, is really effective in improving motor function and mobility um, post-stroke, so we can work more uh, on the joint mobility. So in the later stage of rehabilitation, we can apply more um, complicated tasks and more active tasks. So the joints will be prepared for being um, more loaded. Um, furthermore, implementing the robotic device into this early bed rehabilitation can really facilitate the neuroplasticity and can improve the motor control uh, ability. So to start from the very beginning. Um, Luna EMG CPM programs uh, are really good for muscle relaxation. So we can start with CPM programs as a warm up exercise. We can work with CPM programs on preventing joint contractions on the circulatory 
Yeah, so when the patient is immobilized in bed uh, to avoid the um, stay in bed complications. Um, another very useful program which is uh, implemented in Luna EMG is EMG biofeedback. And EMG biofeedback is really recommended as a good tool for stroke rehabilitation because it helps uh, in a muscle training of the upper limb and uh, the patient has uh, additional audio or video feedback uh, and can observe uh, on the screen the muscle activation. Um, EMG biofeedback exercises improve muscle strength and um, uh, when we compare the EMG biofeedback uh, to conventional uh, OT in, for example, improving hand function in stroke patient, um, the contraction values of electrical activities um, increase really um, much more uh, after using the EMG biofeedback training. We can also observe statistically significant improvements in Ashworth scale, in, so in the level of spasticity in Bronstom scale, um, when we apply the EMG biofeedback therapy for the upper extremity, uh, of course, uh, it is about the group which uh, will train with EMG biofeedback. Uh, the main feature of Luna EMG is EMG triggered assistive movements. So uh, the training when Luna EMG assists with the movement based on the muscle activity of the patients. Uh, EMG is a primary input for, for the robot to start with the assistance. So the patient starts to contract and to relax the muscle. Um, and it looks like this kind of on and off strategy. We have several training programs uh, with um, uh, reactive electromyography. Um, there are trigger and hold and trigger and release. Uh, trigger and release is more easy. Uh, I will start the video here. So the patient must activate the right muscle. Yes, for example, the biceps, so that the EMG cross uh, the threshold line, but only once. So trigger and release is mainly used for training how to initiate the movement. <clears throat> the patient doesn't need to maintain the activation during the whole range of motion. And uh, when we want the extension to go down, the patient just needs to relax the muscle so that the extension goes, goes down. Um, so EMG tr uh, trigger and release is really an active movement uh, of the patient uh, supported by the device. Another program, a little bit um, higher level, it's trigger and hold. And the main difference is that the patient need to um, um, generate the activity which cross the threshold line, but he needs to keep the um, activation during the whole range of motion. So it's not only about the initiation of the movement, but it's also about keeping the contraction. Uh, and when the patient relax and didn't reach the full range of motion, Luna will stop or will go even down. Uh, so still we can work on the muscle contraction and it's much more engaging for the patient that trigger and release. Um, we have another new version of our software. So we implemented three different new trainings for reactive electromyography. This is, um, we have a trigger and hold uh, agonist, antagonist and a relaxation mode. And let me tell you just a few words um, about each of them. Agonist. So when we want to train um, 
agonist muscles, for example, biceps and triceps. So the patient must activate the right muscle. Of course, the activity needs to cross the um, threshold line and he maintained the activation uh, uh, until the end of the set range of motion. And to bring the extension to the initial position, the second channel, yes? So we have to choose uh, which channel goes for which movement. So the antagonist muscle must go over the threshold line and uh, the patient need to maintain the activation until the end of the uh, range of motion. So um, very simple, when the patient um, contract the biceps, the extension goes up. And when the patient contract the triceps, the extension goes down. So um, the robot receives the signal, the initial signal from both the muscles. Another program is the agonist. I'm sorry. The agonist mode. So when we work, uh, for example, with the upper limb and we want to work on, um, on, on the shoulder joint, so we can uh, choose two muscles which participate in the same movement, in the same direction. Um, and here to bring the extension to the initial position, it is enough to relax only one muscles. And when we want the extension to go up, uh, both mus muscles need to be contracted. So both muscles, both agonist muscles need to participate actively during the movement, but to go down with the extension, only one muscle needs to be relaxed. Uh, so here we can work on the compensation. So when the patient is using not those muscles which we want to be uh, involved in this certain, um, certain movement. And the last mode is uh, the relaxation mode, also uh, very important because the stroke patients, they have a lot of problems with voluntary contraction and uh, relaxation of the muscles. And here uh, we need to uh, choose which muscle is uh, assigned as contraction and which muscle is assigned for uh, being uh, relaxed. Um, so um, the muscle which is assigned for contraction uh, is um, need to uh, go with the uh, EMG activity over the threshold line. And this activity should be maintained uh, during the uh, whole range of motion. And at the same time, the muscle which is assigned to be relaxed must be below the threshold line. So the muscle should be relaxed. Um, and both of these conditions must be met throughout the whole, the entire um, movement. You can see it on the graph here on the video. So the blue line um, is all the time over the threshold and the red line, which is uh, for contraction, is all the time above the threshold line. So these are the three new programs, uh, which are um, here. We, we, uh, I described it uh, into the trigger and hold, but of course you can apply it also in the trigger and release. And the only difference is that the patient just need to initiate the movement and to keep the contraction during the uh, whole range of motion. few words also about the clinical application of Luna EMG for the stroke survivors. Um, the first patient case um, is, um, this is the patient um, uh, with the rehabilit the, the in he needed to be rehabilitated for the um, upper limb, especially uh, the forearm. Um, 
uh, he was admitted to hospital for four months. And during this, uh, this period, he didn't really regain a lot of function in, in his uh, hand. Um, and uh, he started to work with Luna EMG uh, and now he really improved the function. Uh, so he's more uh, able to be um, self-dependent and he can, um, uh, he started to pick the things and he started to make himself the sandwiches. And uh, what did we do? We, uh, he mostly used the trigger and hold program and EMG biofeedback. And when the patient improved, we started to work with him with dynamic reversal, so a little bit of resistance. The goal was to activate and to improve the strength uh, of the forearm, especially the pronation and supination. Uh, and uh, the goal of the therapy was to improve the wrist flexors. And for those, uh, we uh, used the EMG biofeedback. Uh, the training lasts two weeks. Uh, two times per week and um, uh, for 12 weeks. And at the beginning, the patient exercised half an hour and then the session extended to even one hour. Another possibility of clinical application is for the lower limb. So when the patient is using the wheelchair, uh, could really uh, not move uh, independently uh, has some problems with the um, knee uh, muscle stability, uh, muscle uh, knee control, so he cannot walk uh, by himself. And uh, let me just show you a short video describing this patient uh, history. Pan Józef trafił do nas na początku lipca. Jest to pacjent po udarze. Jego rehabilitacja trwa do chwili obecnej, czyli 6 tygodni. Pacjent początkowo poruszał się na wózku inwalidzkim. U pacjenta występował duży niedobad prawostronny. Miał zaburzone zgięcie grzbietowe stopy oraz nie kontrolował ustawienia kolana, które uciekało mu w przeprost. Stopniowo, w miarę upływu czasu, pacjent poruszał się przy pomocy niskiego balkonika, następnie z kikami Nordic. Brał udział w ćwiczeniach indywidualnych z fizjoterapeutą oraz uczestniczył również w ćwiczeniach na lunie. Jaki potencjał u pacjentów widzę przy zastosowaniu luny? Jak pacjent nie wykazuje żadnego ruchu kończyną, a jest chociaż minimalne napięcie mięśnia, to wówczas poprzez napięcie mięśnia przed wykorzystaniem EMG jest wykonany ten dany ruch. Można zwiększać zakres ruchu jak i zwiększać ma siłę mięśniową. To jest naprawdę widać. Podczas chodu pacjent bardzo się odciążał, lecz z biegiem czasu jakość chodu pacjenta znacznie się poprawiła i obecnie pacjent porusza się samodzielnie. Pacjent widzi, że jest nowy sprzęt, coś innego, coś się dzieje, że to nie są zwykłe ćwiczenia tylko fizjoterapeuta i on, tylko jest jeszcze wykorzystywana jakby nowa technologia i wielokrotnie słyszałam, że pacjent mówił, żeby była taka możliwość, żeby drugi raz mógł skorzystać z tego robota, to bardzo by chętnie chciał z niego skorzystać. Yeah, so our patients are really um, satisfied with Luna EMG and uh, we observe mainly very positive attitude towards the device. Um, for this patient, um, we recommended the trigger and hold uh, exercise mainly. And the goal was to increase the strength and coordination, especially for the quadriceps and hamstrings. So for the muscles which controls the knee, the training were provided five times uh, a week for half an hour during six, six weeks. And as a result, patient will learn on how to contract and the, the extensors and flexors of the knee. So he improved the gait uh, and he improved also the muscle force of the lower limb.
Another uh, clinical application is more about the frozen shoulder, which is very common for the stroke patient. Um, this, the, this, this kind of complication we can avoid. Um, we need to focus more on the proper positioning uh, of the patient at the very beginning of um, the rehabilitation because the patient mainly after the stroke has decreased um, attention. Yes, so um, the muscles which are engaged for uh, shoulder stabilization are weakened and they are also more stretched. So um, it's really, um, so, so the shoulder is also very weak and we can uh, destroy the function by improper uh, positioning of the patient. And it leads to the um, very, very painful stage for the patient. And when he is in pain, he cannot really um, go for any movement. Even the passive movement is really uh, hard for him. So we really uh, should keep that also in mind. But how to work with Luna EMG for this frozen shoulder? Um, in this uh, patient case, we of course applied um, the movement, uh, the flexion and extension uh, also based on the muscle activity. So the patient were um, exercising actively and passively. Uh, so we worked mostly on the muscle coordination, muscle strength, and um, increasement of the range of motion. And after the training, the patient results in improved uh, mass, uh, improved range of motion. So we can compare. The first video is before the therapy, so we can observe. Um, the ranges of the shoulder for the flexion and for the abduction and uh, adduction. Here the patient, the abduction was more limited, but still um, some movement was possible. And after the treatment, the patient has um, really more uh, range of motion uh, he, he gained more range of motion, especially in flexion and also uh, the adduction, abduction uh, improved. Yeah. All right. Um, another possibility of working with, with uh, stroke patient is facial palsy. We can observe the facial palsy um, in our stroke patients. Uh, and here for this patient, we were using um, the EMG diagnostic to diagnose whether there is any activity in this muscle. And based on that, we um, applied several tasks. Uh, she, um, we asked the patient to smile uh, and so the EMG uh, was catching the activity on the cheek, uh, whether she's smiling like from both sides. So if she's using uh, the muscles on both sides and she could really observe it uh, on the graph. So it was more uh, the visual feedback and the patient was really positive towards uh, this kind of exercise. And last but not least, the spasticity, which is also a hard topic. And uh, a lot of uh, you is asking us about how to use Luna EMG also for the spastic. So uh, when we think about the spasticity and the spastic muscle, we need to think about it like spastic muscle is a weak muscle. So uh, to work with the spasticity, we need to work more in the muscle uh, force increasement. So we need to go more with the strength. Um, and 
we need to remember that we can apply Luna EMG only for those patients when the, where the spasticity level is below Ashworth uh, free. Yes, so uh, all the patients who has the spasticity higher than Ashworth free, uh, they are not really the patients for Luna EMG. So this is the contraindication. Uh, we strongly recommend the CPM for the very beginning to uh, get the patient more um, prepared for the movement. And uh, also we use the reactive electromyography, especially the application for antagonist muscles. So the patient is uh, learning on how to voluntarily contract and release. And we can use for that either the single or the double channel. Um, another problem is when the patient has no hand function. So here we recommend uh, to use the special glove um, to uh, fix the, the hand on, on the extension so that the patient who, who cannot really grab, um, grab uh, can be placed and fixed to the extension properly. Um, just to sum up, uh, we would like to share with you that Luna EMG uh, actively work with neurological patients now all over the world. And we have uh, implemented more than 130 Lunas uh, worldwide. So uh, there are a lot of satisfied patients and satisfied uh, therapists and we are still keep on growing. Uh, so, um, for now, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I'm happy to answer them um, either on the chat or uh, by using the question and answer poll. So, are there any questions? I cannot see any questions, so maybe we highlighted all uh, the topics. Okay. Um, Yes, so first uh, we do have the representatives in Asia. Um, please contact uh, Mr. Sergi Molchanov or please write us an email so we can contact you uh, directly. Um, what preparation of stroke patient before going to Luna? Um, could you please make it more clear um, yes, the video recording will be available. Uh, oh, Frank, thank you. Yes, new programs. And I, we, I really like the programs. So please try to use them. Um, and the physios, which we are also working with, are really happy to have this agonist, antagonist and relaxation programs. Uh, for using this program, you, you have to use two channels EMG. When you put only one channel, uh, you cannot see those programs. So uh, two channels must be applied on the patient's uh, limb to be uh, presented on the screen. Oh, I have also the... Uh, Well, uh, the Ashworth free is contraindicated because up to now we have only 40 Newton meters and uh, the, move, the movement speed is 50. So uh, we cannot really work with this uh, severe paresis um, uh, because there is too much stiffness. Uh, so for now, Ashworth free 
and more in the spasticity level it's contraindicated. Uh, our suggestion, yeah, yeah uh, it might be like that, that uh, you need the, the Botox, in, um, the Botox uh, injections, or you can also work passively with uh, manually with physio. So when the, um, the spasticity decreased, then you go uh, with the, more with the robotics. Uh, finger and hand rehabilitation. For now, we work uh, with the forearm, so uh, only the wrist can be um, can be placed here for the proper training, uh, and we can work on the forearm muscles muscles by using the EMG. Uh, maybe in the future we will have more opportunities to work with with the hand. We are still growing, and we uh, are still. Um, implementing new functionalities, so hopefully we'll uh, make it also for, for the hand. Uh, yes, we can customize the treatment program, so all the programs may be, uh, might be adjust to the patient's mobility when we talk about uh, and the patient's uh, abilities, so when we talk more about the uh, when we talk more about the electrodes, so about the reactive electromyography, uh, we can use for that uh, um, the threshold line. So we do the calibration and based on the calibration, we can uh, see um, what is the, the possible um, activity, muscle activity of the patient. So based on that, we adjust the training program. It's the same uh, on the resistance everything uh, and the range of motion, everything can be perfectly adjusted to the patient. So we customize the treatment program. Another program, yes, we can save uh, the patient data. Uh, the, 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 the reports are stored in, um, in the cloud, so in, in the system, and we can transfer the patient data. So they are in the PDF file or in the CSV. Um, we have a company reference in Italy. Um, so if you could write us an email, we can um, contact you uh, directly. Um, okay, another program. Um, okay. Range of motion set by the therapist. No, the range of motion is always set by the therapist. There is no uh, setting the range of motion by the system. It's always, we, we need to remember that Luna EMG is a tool in the physiotherapist hands. So it's always physio uh, who is um, deciding on the parameters. Mm. Yes, before using the Luna EMG, uh, to be certified Luna EMG users, you need to complete the, the training. Uh, you need to complete the um, you need to complete the training. Uh, we provide the comprehensive training, which is uh, divided into theoretical part and also the hands-on practice. And after the training, you need to complete uh, the short quiz test to be uh, certified. Um, if the patient do the robotic exercise three times a week, is it useful or not? I will always say that it is useful. Every movement is useful, uh, even three times a week, if it's possible to implement uh, the robotics, uh, it's really nice because it's something more and the patient gets more engagement and he is working more actively. So we can work with the EMG and with the EMG reactive electromyography. So the patient is more, um, uh, it's, it's all about this active participation, which is building much more um, neuroplasticity. Um, how this nice uh, webinar, uh, the webinar, the information about the webinar and um, the presentation will be uh, provided for the participants who, who, who uh, signed up. 
Um, the audio biofeedback, yes, uh, the, the, if the audio biofeedback is possible. Well, uh, yes, we use the audio biofeedback for EMG biofeedback program. And when the patient is collecting the points by uh, keeping the contraction, he, uh, he uh, gets the noise. Uh, so that he is contracting actively. When he stops to contract, there is uh, the noise also uh, goes down. Um, yes, uh, we do have also the pelvic floor rehabilitation programs. So for Luna EMG, you can also have the um, a pelvic floor, a special pelvic floor uh, uh, electrodes, so more internal electrodes, and you can work uh, with the EMG and with the um, EMG biofeedback uh, program, and it's also possible for, for Luna. Okay, all right, I hope uh, I hope I answered more or less all the questions. If any more questions appears, please just write us an email and we will uh, be happy to answer the questions um, uh, on e by the email. So uh, me and my uh, other colleagues from the clinical team are happy to help you um, to go through your all doubts regarding Luna EMG and uh, the application for the stroke patients. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and uh, that you uh, wanted to get more information about how to use Luna EMG for the neurology and for especially the stroke patient. So I wish you a pleasant week and hope to uh, see you soon during uh, another webinar session. Thank you. Bye-bye.